Hello, hello, Smith Riley here. If you are joining me for a take two, thank you so much for coming. I uh, hope that we've got all our tech issues sorted out now and that Jonathan Edwards can join us. Jonathan is an Olympian and he has just written a book, An Athlete's Guide to Winning in Sport and Life. All righty, let's... It better happen this time. Hey. And we have takeoff. This is so exciting. <laughs> oh, no. Can you believe that my phone is saying I'm running out of batteries? <laughs> this no. is one of those days, isn't it? Yeah, but that's okay. Leon's about to go and get a plug for me to plug it in. <laughs> this is so funny. Jonathan, isn't he amazing? He is amazing. Uh but, I'm worth waiting for. I'm totally worth waiting but for. But there is someone else that is just as amazing. And let me just plug my phone in. And that person is you. There we go. That's Thank me, you right? so much for joining us. I'm so excited to chat with you here. Well, you know, now that I'm here for the second time, I totally yeah. feel like I've been and, here and before. Can I tell people that you couldn't get Zoom to work either and then we had to do a Skype that didn't work so well and then we had to, yeah, it's been one of those days. So there you go, guys. There's the low down that uh, tech issues happen to all of us super smart I, people. I know stuff. I don't know all stuff, I guess. Right? That's just me. None but of us do, right? And Leah, thank you so much. I will absolutely share in uh, the Business Success Academy group how we got all this happening. And uh, actually, in that little group, I'll share everything that went wrong and tell you how to fix it, even. But let's move on. Welcome to a true thought leader. Um, I have loved having a chat with you over the last couple of weeks, um, talking about how you've wound up here where you are just before, uh, you know, getting in the publishing your book and which today has launched. Congratulations. Thank you. The, uh, Thank you. An Athlete's Guide to Winning in Sport and Life. And I'm very lucky to have been – you gifted me a copy a couple of weeks ago and I've had my nose in it. I absolutely love it. It's so good. Um, I've got a son who is very sporty and there's a sport mum reading it um, and also from having a dance teacher background. So seeing it from kind of that coach side and mm -hmm. from the parent side, I was just like, mm -hmm. oh, this is gold. This is gold. So that's why I wanted to interview you and um, chat to you about the book and also um, some of the other things that we were chatting about before around, um, you know, why you wrote it. Because I find that really quite intriguing because, you know, I would think as an, an Olympic athlete or a former Olympic athlete that your authority positioning would be right up there, right? Yeah. And, and you know, that's the funny thing about this is, is that, um, you know, I think anybody who's in uh, the expert role, right, and what, what we – mean by that is right like in in the land of the blind the one-eyed man is king so anybody who is in this ec in this position of sharing advice no matter what it is uh, you run into a bunch of little hurdles and the first one is like does somebody believe you you know and and so you have to have some sort of authority uh, like device and, and as you mentioned, like, yeah, when I was you know, as an Olympian, you, you think that holds a bit of weight. And, but when you live in a city like Calgary, Alberta, where everybody's an Olympian, you know, it's like, well, not really. What do you know? Right. So, you know, it's yeah. funny because when, when we had, when my wife and I had a retail store, I used to always say that this store was a credibility device. And, and for anybody who's a thought leader, who's exchanging ideas, what separates you from the next person? And so you have to layer these credibility devices around you. And that can be a website is, is a start. Nowadays, it's like, you know, you have to, it's like the old business card. You know, you have to have a website. It has to look good. Um, but what else do you layer around you? And a book is one of those things. And it's a pretty big thing. I'm learning. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, for anyone that's, that hasn't seen, I've got um, the foundation of everything I teach is, um, thought leaders positioning and I've got a model and it's around positioning yourself as an authority, building your profile and getting your exposure and being a published author and being able to put your methodology in a book so that people understand what it is you can you do and how you can help is absolutely essential, not just to, to um, create 
are leveraged, you know, so more people hear your message, but also to position you so people go, we get it. We, we know what it is that, that um, you know, that he teaches and why and how. Um, so can you take us back to the, the time or the moment that you decided, I'm going to write this book? Because you, you were an Olympic athlete and then you had a break where there was a whole lot of other things happening. How did you wind up back here where you went, okay, this is what I need to do. Um, let's start there. So 16 years ago, I moved to Las Vegas to train with a strength and conditioning coach. And I had found this person online on a very big website in the United States. And I was thinking about making a comeback into sport. And I wrote this guy. And long story short, I moved from Boston to Las Vegas to train there. And while I was there, so in my head, I had seen this person online. And this is, again, 16 years ago. So online was still was kind of unique, right? And I saw this person. He was writing in... Uh, in fitness magazines. And so these were a thought, right? Credibility devices, you know, internet magazines. Hey, I want to work with this guy. And I moved out to him to, to, to work with him. And during that time, he asked me, he goes, listen, I've always wanted to grow my business. And this is a total true story. He's making about six figures a year writing for fitness magazines. And, but the funny thing was that he wasn't really training anybody one-on-one. -on -one. And so that put me into the world of marketing. And, and it led me into the world of information marketing, to be precise. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. in a short amount of time, I met a bunch of people who were making a bazillion amount, bazillion amount of money, dollars, doing you know, all sorts of things. And I, that was the first time I understood that a book was a thing that really you know, made you stand apart. And he had actually written a book, a very small one, and it was in the martial arts field. But it immediately, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it immediately put him above anybody else because he had this book. So really, this has gone on for like 16 years. I knew that a book is really the thing. And, and since that time, I, you know, we've seen all these publishing and the self-publishing side of things explode and Chicken Soup for the Soul explode and all this. And I've yeah. gone to seminars and I've gone and learned from people. And I just, you know, it's just the thing, you know, so I have a friend who's a very, uh, very popular, very, very wealthy, very busy speaker, doesn't have a book, right? And, and he was like, oh, just start speaking. And I was like, you know what? No, I need a, I need a book first because I need a credibility device for people to go, oh, he's a, an Olympian and he's an author. Oh, you know, it doesn't yeah. seem weird. Yeah. It's like, oh, I worked my tail off to become an Olympian and now, wait, I need to do the day. <laughs> it's like, come on. But so it's, it's, it's been 16 years of knowing that a book would be you know, in, in the, in the works. And I believe I'm one of those people that believe everybody has a book in them, but I've also yes. believe that it, sh it should come out. You know, there's that yes. joke, like everybody's got a book in them, but it should probably stay there. Now I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm I, I think if you're in this type of business, you need to have a book for, for two reasons, one for your audience, but also for you. So it's, it goes both ways. Actually, I'd love to touch on that because I totally agree with that. Um, I've got, uh, I've had a really great conversation with a friend of mine who wrote a book so that she could get her methodologies onto paper. So, you know, as a thought leader, we want to share our methodologies. That's what she did to write a book. And, and she tells people to get clear on that first and then write the book where I found that writing the book helped me get clear on my methodology. So I, I'm not really sure which comes first, the chicken or the egg, but go with whatever works for you and don't, don't, get stopped in your tracks just because you're not clear on them yet because I think the um and, and I'm hearing the same from you just the idea of unpacking that IP will help you to get clarity because when you start writing it's amazing you know you're, you're reading your own words going it made sense in here and I'm reading it on the page and I and I'm confusing myself you know you have to get very clear on it it's it's so I had a sports psychologist that I worked with many years ago and he has since written 13 books and um I called him because I, I drove cross country, got to Calgary, Alberta, went to the university library, found a sports psychology book, never seen one before and picked it up. And I read it in two days and in the back of the page was his phone number. And I called him and two days later he called me back and I was shocked. I was like, really authors call you back. But when I talked to him, one of the first things he said, was like, you know, for the reason I wrote that book was to get my own ideas out of me and to see them. And to see yes. them in, instead of swimming around in your head, to see them in a concrete form and to know like, oh, wait, okay, I have this idea and I have this other idea. 
but how do I mesh them together? How do I articulate that to a client or, or you know, or whoever that may be? And it, he, his, so his argument, and, and, and I would, I would now having done this, you, you gain more momentum by getting little bits and pieces out of you on paper. It doesn't have to be in some solid framework. You don't have to start with some defined, um, like, uh, um, outline because personally I ended up blowing up a couple different outlines. And even when I was mm. 90% done with a book, I was like, well, no, wait a second. This, this makes, I got to move this here and move this there and take that out. That doesn't make sense now, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. So, so I'm all for getting out of your head and getting it on paper. Um, and, and even then, you know, I've got a 350 page book and it's not done. And, and yeah. I just, I've really just, I've just gotten my head around the fact that it's never going to be done. Um, yes. Uh, but I will tell you this, I think there's a difference between writing a book for the author and writing a book for a market. Yes. And I would say that right now the book that I have written is for me yes. um, because um, I, would, I would look at parts of the book. And as you can see behind me, I got tons of books, right? And this is like two of, I think I got 10 or eight or 10 shelves in my house. There's books in here that are written for a, a business purpose, right? Yes. Uh, they're lead generation tools. But then there are books that are written like with heart and like, you know, I want you to have this and, and, and I want you to, you know, if you're looking for an answer, I want you to be able to pick up my book and find an answer. There's a different, yeah, yeah. There's a different mindset there. And, and I know that if I went right to an editor, they'd be like, oh, you got to take this out, blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, no. No, because if, if there's a kid or a parent or coach out there who's struggling, I want to have the answer for them. And so that's, yeah. what, that's, that's what my book's about. Yeah. Thanks, Lee, for letting me know. I, Jonathan, I think your microphone is actually hitting your zipper and it's, and it's making a shocking noise. But I know that we also have a lot of other authors on the line. Um, I'd love you to leave your comments be below of what your – um, experiences were in writing a book. So I know that Elizabeth Gilbert in, oh, I think Big Magic was talking about the fact that when people write a book, the first time they write a book, it's for them. Um, and and I, I mean, my book totally was. It was, it was for me. It was a, it was a healing process. It was a way of getting, you know, leaving a lot of stuff behind about getting clear on what was happening moving forward. So, um, yeah, I totally agree with that. And I also agree that everyone should get their book out. I think that the people that say everyone's got a book in them but not everyone should get it out, I don't think is quite right. I think I believe the caveat to that is get the book out, but if it's a little bit, you know, if, if it needs some help, get some help. So, you know, it might not be great the first time. You know, I, so I started actually helping a – oh, hey, Julius. I see Julius wrote – Julius worked for me. He's in the Philippines and he is oh, one of the no. best guys ever. His wife and his kid and his family. Phenomenal. He worked for me for Sam. I don't know if I ever told you this, but in Canada, I am, I, I was, I don't probably not still there, but the top 5% of users of Odesk now Upwork. Um, no so, way. So, oh, I, I know Upwork very well. <laughs> right, right. So Julius is awesome. And so, uh, hi, Julius. How's it going? Um, oh, so, so great to, to have Philippines in the house. Yeah. Well, you guys know. I mean, you're much closer than I am, but holy smokes. Well, I've got a few of them. A few right. of them doing some awesome stuff for me today, actually. But, yeah. So, yeah. so, um, so where were we? I, now, we, I got off track there, but the, the – the, uh, uh, well, the book. I was saying that everyone should get their book out, but they may need some help in doing so. So while I've been doing this, so, so I don't want to scare anybody, but like I've spent the last, like, I would say nine months getting this thing kind of done. And it wasn't like, I, w I won't say like I was some religious every day. I worked an hour. I, I had days where I worked for no time. You know, I've been lucky enough where, you know, my, my wife is an interior designer. We have another business. We have a couple other businesses. Uh, but I really took this time to go, you know what? I need to get this done. And so, um, but I'm of the mindset of getting little bits and pieces out of you every single day on one little topic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I actually started helping a guy and, and I'm actually, we talked before we got on the phone about starting this almost as a service for people, you know, interviewing him. Because one of the things I know about people who are thought leaders 
is that, you know, a lot of them say like, oh, I can't write or I'm not good in front of the camera. But if I got you in front of your client, you would talk for hours, right? Yes. Yes. Right? Like, there's no question. Like, you could talk for days. And, 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 you know, how many times have you worked with a client for an hour and gone, like, really? We just an hour? Like, come on, I'll see you tomorrow. I know. I hear that all the time with people saying, I'm really scared to run a webinar. I'm scared to talk because I might run out of things to say. Like, and really? I, I'm with you. Really? <laughs> like, seriously, if I put marbles in your mouth and you drop to the bottom of a swimming pool, I reckon you could still talk about your topic for three days straight. You know, and I see Paula writing there, like, my first book was a download of everything that was in my head. That's exactly what it yes. is. Yes. And, yeah. and, and so, you know, I have a couple different blogs and, and one of the first blogs I started again, 15 years ago was in the lacrosse niche where I had played in high school. And, and I, I started it because I moved to Canada and I didn't have any goalies to coach here. So I started it as a way and I started a newsletter and all I did was I picked one question and I answered that question. And I still yep. do that every week. That's what my blog is all about. That's what I started helping this gentleman with. And, and, and where I just like, we just get on the phone and we take an hour and we go through four questions. And what's amazing is I get four questions done. We get four blog posts. We get four uh, podcast episodes. We get four things that he can share on Facebook and, and, and Instagram and Twitter and whatnot. And it's amazing because when we're done, he's like, we're done? I said, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Funny, right? You know, so, so yeah. and, we, and we transcribe it and, and it's, it's, it's out of his head and it's, it's, it's there. And, you know, uh, I would say now, you know, the book that I wrote is in terms of complexity is like, is here, but there's people now that talk about, you know, just getting something in a book form, like whatever it is, you know, it's like the 90 minute book or things like that. And not to knock it, that can be a good lead generation tool. Like if, you know, if you're a, if you're a, uh, if you're trying to teach meditation and you can speak for an hour on the top 10 reasons why you should meditate, well, you transcribe that you've got a book. And you've got something Absolutely. that you can have at the back of a room or you can meet somebody in a subway and get talking to them and go, you know, hey, I wrote a book on that. And you can give it to them and it costs you like a buck 50 to print. And they're like, oh, wow, thank you. Right? Do you know the best place to hand out books is actually on airplanes because you've got someone sitting next to you. The amount of people that have got my book that I've sat next to on a plane, you know, because you you know, you're up in the air and there's nowhere to go and you start chatting and they, and it's just so amazing the yeah. amount of, of books I've given away that way. Um, but what I'd love you to share. So definitely we both agree that you need to have a book for authority positioning for getting your message to more people there. I know that there's a lot of people on this, um, on this live that have written books, but there's also a lot that haven't, or maybe, you know, they're, They've written their memoirs and they're ready to really get their authority positioning book down. What are three tips that you can give us of a place to start to really start to, to get that information and unpack the IP? So the first thing I would say is just understand that it's never going to be done. It's never going to be perfect. And, and really, you have to, um, like I took the 80% solution approach which is that if you, you know, a, a book is, is, is something that can be 80% good and, and, and work and be usable, right? In, yep. in your head, you may know that there's like, you know, 400% more stuff you can put in there. But the bottom line is that it, 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 80%, it's fine. And the, the thing is, is that your 80% is more than what 80% really needs to be. Does that make sense? Yeah, like yeah, absolutely. Yep. Don't, don't complicate it because, so I totally wrote this with, and, and I've, I've taken stuff out and I've got a Google doc full of, you know, uh, scraps, I call it, you know, stuff that I just took out and, and, and that'll go in something else later, but just know that it's not going to be perfect and that your idea of, of 80% isn't really 80%. Just know that it's not going to be great. It's not going to be up to your full expectation, but it doesn't have to be. Um, yes. You know, so, so we're not doing heart surgery here. Right. <laughs> so, um, well, you're, you're, we're our own worst, our own best critics or worst critics, whichever way you say it. But I think, you know, what I'm trying to say there, right. that, that you, and that's what you're saying, right. That our 80% is, is over 80% for someone else that knows, especially nothing about our topic. And I still like when Nikki just wrote there that, uh, that uh, and Nikki, thanks. Like, this is great. You know, this is what we do, right? We could, like, I love talking about this stuff. You know, it's funny, 15 years ago when I worked with that strength and conditioning coach or 16 years ago, and, um, I started a newsletter 
for personal trainers. Because what was interesting was here was this guy and he had a newsletter list. This, this kills me just thinking about it. He had 20,000 people on a newsletter list. This was 15 years ago. He eventually scrubbed that list like, and I was just shocked. But anyway, I, I, I ran at all these personal trainers who, who looked to this guy. And, and, and this would probably be point number two, which is, um, which is you don't have to be the expert you just need to be their expert. And that meaning their, mm. meaning your clients, right? And so there were these personal trainers who looked to this guy like I had. I mean, I drove cross country to work with this guy. And, but when I got there, I realized, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it's looking behind the, 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 the wizard and the Wizard of Oz, right? You know, it wasn't really all yeah. that I thought it was going to be, right? Um, and, and, and so I started that newsletter as a way to encourage these personal trainers who had a passion for fitness and you, you, you can relate to this. I know. Um, but you don't need to be the world's leading expert in fat loss. You just need to help that client who's come to you mm. with their solution because they, this is the other thing that, that people will relate to you. You know, they may never relate to Tony Robbins or JJ Virgin or anybody, you name it, you name a name, you name a guru. And I'll tell you, there are people who don't like them but who will like you? Of course. Right? Of course. And, and so, but well, of you, course. you and I say, of course, but there's people out there who are in their niche who, 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 it doesn't matter what it is. They've learned from somebody else, right? They've learned from somebody and, and you're going to love this quote. I know. So, and they go, well, I can't share what I've learned. I have to give credit to this. It's like school, right? You've got to give all site, do all your citations. And here's the deal. Write this down, right? If you, take from one person, it's stealing. If you steal from two people, it's research. Okay. And, and so, and so here, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, but the thing is, is that, is that you, you have a lifetime of knowledge and it doesn't matter if you're 14 years old or 45 years old, you have enough knowledge that you can put your name on it. And that's what your yeah. book, that's what your book is. That's what your course is. And, and, and by the way, your audio book or your, 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 your tape, you know, series, your CD series, your online course is just you reading your book, right? Yeah. So the book is really that first kicker to get it, you know, to get things moving. Um, now, if someone has started, I would always say this, if someone has done like an audio course first, you know, if they've taken like 10 topics and they've divided all at three each and they've got 30 topics and well, there's your book. There's, well, there's probably a couple of books, right? Yeah, yeah. If, if everyone loves these comments that Jonathan's shared, he's only shared his two tips so far. Give us some love. Tap that screen. Give us some love. Let us know that you're loving these, these tips. Um, just quickly before you do your third tip, I want to share something that um, my gorgeous fiance Leon shared with me uh, when I first met him because coming from a corporate background, he didn't know this whole coaching world exists. Like his mind still a couple of years later is still blown because it makes no sense. Like, he's just like, I don't even know where you guys, like, there was this thing, this coaching world. But I remember saying to him once, oh, I can't use that because, you know, someone such and such taught it to me. He's like, huh? And I'm like, you know, so-and-so taught this. I can't do it. He's like, what? So every single person that goes to university can't use what they've learned over their four-year degree? And I went, that makes sense, right? All these doctors and brain surgeons around in the world doing what they've learned every single day. And a lot of people get caught up in this, oh, we, we can't do that. But it's not that we're copying. It's the way, it's the way that we put our information together because everything that we've learned, all our experiences, when they come together, they're unique. Sure, we might have learned them all in, you know, for that bit from Tony Robbins and, and, you know, that bit from you and that bit from me, but it's how the whole lot comes together and your unique perspective of it. And that's what makes you the expert. It's your package. Right. It's, it's, you know, it's, um, I heard once that when you go to the pharmacy and you shop for acne cream, it's all the same stuff in a different package. The same thing's true with makeup. It's all the same product typically give or take, but it's just packaged in a different way. And, and, and you're that package. So, Absolutely. so, so that leads me to tip number three, which is basically there's, Everything starts with a, a small, good idea. And, and so what happens is what I did, and, and our, our cell phones are the best things we have 
on us to help us write a book. Because what we have is, and, and I did this, I opened a note or a Google Doc or I would bounce back and forth between using one of the two. And if I was in my car or wherever it was and I found a good idea, I wrote it down. And what that did over time was, you know, I captured all these bits of information um, and, and because I've done this for such a long time, and this kills me because, you know, I, I, I give myself a hard time because I should have written this book a long time ago, but also I could have written this book a long time ago. Yeah. Does that make sense? Right. So perfectly said. So, so it's, so, so don't beat yourself up over that. But what I did, this was interesting when I finally went through, um, uh, like, external hard drives and Google Docs and, and all this stuff. And I started compiling all these like blog posts I had written and articles I had done and little tid emails I'd written to parents and saved in a file somewhere. I had 40,000 words and, and, and right there between 45 and 75,000 is a really decent sized book. Well, I've ended yep. up with 116,000 words, right? Wow. <laughs> you know? And, and so yes, people would say like, Oh my God, that's too big. Nobody's going to read it. Here's the thing. Nobody reads books. That's the weird thing about all this book stress is that the book that people are stressing about writing, no one's going to read it anyway. Like, ten, like I read the books. You, I read you, the books. You do. <laughs> I, I do. I do. But the yeah, thing is, like, oh my God. what are the statistics about book readers? Yeah, actually, it is very, very low. But even if people flick through and just take out the key concepts. It's, it's like handing somebody a $10 bill. It's like, oh, thank you. Right? That's it. Right. And now if they go read it, they, they flip through it, they read, you know, they see one or two things like, yes, you read, I read, if you meet somebody you really like, you devour. Right. Um, but it's like copywriting, right? It's the same thing about copywriting. You know, people talk about long copy, short copy. The bottom line is if somebody is interested, they will read. So yeah. why not write what interests you? You know? And so, so if you capture these little tidbits and you can, you can, um, you can speak it into your phone, but you know what? Like, this is the weird thing. Let me just touch on this one thing. People have a hard time. They talk about like, oh, I can't write. We type all day long. Right? <laughs> right? I I'm sorry. You can write like you can write and you can write as you speak. And that's the most important way to write anyway. Like you don't have to write like you're in, you know, English 300 or whatever, um, you know, so, so, so don't beat yourself up. Like, oh, I can't write. That's, that's, that's a total like lie. Right. So, yeah. so everybody writes. So, so if you want to take 30 minutes, whatever, you know, write. And then, and then here's the other thing. Some people think like, oh, if I just took like four days, I'd be able to knock out my book. You know, I, tr I've tried that. You know, I was out of my aunt. I did it. Did you? Okay, great. <laughs> I did it. Yeah, yeah great. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, so here's the thing, though. Um, you know, I tried it for a couple – like, I was out of my in-laws, and I was going crazy, and I just left my wife out there with the kids, and I drove home three hours away, and I'm like, I got to write. I'm just out of here. I'm going to get this kid's yeah. book. I, didn't, I wasn't even close. And there's stories of people who write books, and, um, and, they, and, they, and then they can do that, and I think that's fine. But I think for, for my experience – doing a little bit of something every day, even if it was like sitting in a coffee shop for 20 minutes, waiting for my wife at, at the mall, uh, it adds up. And so do that. Like I would. So what I'm that. hearing from you there is do what's right for you. Stop, you know, as Tony Robbins says, stop shooting over yourself. Everything happens at the right time. Do what feels right for you. Allow it to flow. Um, and I totally agree with don't worrying about writing. Like we wrote English at school. Um, you know, people will sit down and read a conversational book. And I know that I've had a few people read my book and reach out and say, we could almost hear you saying it because I wrote just the same way that I talk. So I think that's a, a great idea of speaking into your phone because that will make it so much more conversational. And, and I would add this, like, uh, I don't know if you, do you know about Trent? Trent.com. So this, no. this blew my here. I'm going to rock your world. Samantha, get ready. Everybody. Okay. Listen. Everyone. Hang everybody on. Hang listening. on. Everyone. Everybody Are listening. we ready? Are we ready? <laughs> T R I N T.com. All right. I interviewed a guy on my podcast and he was like, hold up. Wait a second. I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, oh, I'm just on Trent. I'm like, what, what's Trent? Um, so artificial intelligence is getting better every day. You, so what I do when I, when I do my blog posts, I do a video, I peel off the audio, I take the audio file, I put it onto Trent, 
within about a minute and a half, a five minute clip is fully transcribed. And, oh, and, and, and wait, it gets better. Um, you, you, you're, you're greeted with this screen and, and you see all the text. Now it's not a hundred percent perfect, but yes. what you do is you hit the play button and you hear your voice and the, the, the words light up across the screen. And so you see the words and when it doesn't, when something doesn't work, you can pause it and you can type over it, or you can just let the audio keep going and you can fix that, that section of words and it keeps talking and then you, it's amazing. So I take a, like a five, six minute audio clip, it takes me about 15 minutes to make it great and put and, and then boom, it's up on the website. So, wow. Yeah. So anyway, trent.com. Check that amazing. out. Amazing. Love it. Love it. Love it. So we've got, so your three tips are just get that, that book done. 80%. It will never be finished. I agree. It's, it's never going to be finished. I know, well, I know Leah's on here and Paula was and some other fellow authors. And the second you finish your book, and I don't know, tell me if you're the same, Jonathan, the second I finished, I was already like, okay, what's the next one? Yeah. Like, it's an addictive, like, uh, addictive. I heard a quote that was like, if you're, not, if you're not embarrassed about your first iteration that goes to market, you waited too long. You yeah. know, and then I heard the yeah. I heard the iPhone thing. You know, if if Steve Jobs ever waited to make the iPhone perfect, we wouldn't have ever gotten one because what are we on now? Exactly. Right. So so I just took those approaches, and I just and I and I just realized that and, and, and because I went a couple of years ago, I went to a very high profile book writing seminar, four day, five days, or whatever. Experts, you name it. You know who you know, and, and oh my God, it just drove me. It drove me crazy. Because here's the other, the number one thing about book writing is you don't make money off the book, right? You don't make money off the book. The book is a business card and the book is a platform builder. The, the ironic thing about that is that if you want to get a book published by a publisher, the first thing they ask you is what's your platform? Well, so just know that your first book isn't going to go to a publisher. You're going to self-publish it. So get something done that you can use and, and, and you can pass out and you know, and you can build a platform off of that. And already, yeah. already I've seen, like, I've got four podcasts book in the next like two days. And when people hear that you've written a book, it's like, Oh, can I have you on my podcast? Well, sure. Yeah. But Absolutely. when you don't, when you don't have one, you're kind of like, Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so don't make a perfect 80% approach, you know, and, and capture this is the thing. If you've ever read the book, um, Getting Things Done by David Allen. So where's Leah? Leah's, Leah's, Leah's all for the good tips here. So Leah, write this down. Yeah. <laughs> Getting... Leah loves the good tips. <laughs> I think, Leah, you waved to me when I was stuck offline. I waved back, I think. So, um, but, so, so, so do I have it over here? Um, I have his other book. But anyway, David Allen wrote a book called Getting Things Done. And everybody should read that book. I don't care how boring you may, like organization is to you. But there's a gold bit in that, in that book, which is the mind is an incredible place for having ideas. It's a horrible place to store them. And I believe, I'm not an overly spiritual guy, but I believe that when you're riding your bike, you're walking the street, or you're cleaning the diaper off your kid, and you get this brilliant idea, it's like the universe, God, or whatever, giving you this good idea. And if you don't take care of that idea, you don't get any more. Yep. But, but what I found is when you capture that idea anywhere, scrap of paper, you know, uh, J.K. Rowling supposedly wrote all her books like this. Like she just accumulated waste baskets of tidbits of paper where she'd written an idea and compiled it. You have to capture that idea somewhere at that time. Yep. Like don't yep. wait. Because if you wait, it goes. And you're like. That's right. What was that? And not only that, but it doesn't go, it doesn't, it doesn't go to the next level. Like the, there's so many of my models that I've got out into paper and gone, oh, that's genius. And you know, the next day I look at it and go, hmm, maybe it wasn't so genius. This is wrong and this is wrong. And then the next day I look at it and change it again. But if I never got it out in the first place and it would never evolve into, you know, what it's meant to turn into. And, and, and that's what thought leadership is all about. Here's, here's one too, Sam, that, that, that really gets, you know, gets, you get some people, maybe it'll get Leah here. I'm not sure. But um, <laughs> it's don't be selfish. You know, don't keep those ideas to yourself. Um, you know, I remember going years ago to a, a real estate seminar in the United States and it's very big real estate guy, one of those infomercial guys, big, huge marketing guy. And there's like about 400 people in the room. 
and you're doing the math, you're like, everybody's here about 3,500 bucks a piece, 250, 400 people. And the first thing, this is how they started the seminar. They go, look around you. Because we know, we do this all over the country. We know that only 2% of you are going to do anything with what it is we tell you this weekend. And I was like, dang. So if you're protecting your information, if you're worried about, you know, waiting to get it out when it's perfect and then be able to have all this back end stuff ready for it, it's all just lies you tell yourself, get it done, get it out there and get it working. And because from Absolutely. there, good, good stuff comes once you get it working. And I've already seen Absolutely. that with this book. I've already seen that. So no, that's great. Love it. Agree. And, and like I said, I, I have read the, the first little bit of it. I certainly haven't finished it. Um, I know who, when I read it, who I thought it would be good for, but share with us, who do you, who did you write the book for? You know, okay. One, me. Um, we, we covered that. Who, who would, hang on, let me, well, let me say a better question. Who, who no, should it, read uh, this book? I got it. So, so, <laughs> I, so the subtitle, the subtitle I kept coming up with was it's for athletes with big dreams and the parents and coaches who support them. Um, and I struggled with this because as I wrote the book, my mind kept going to the, the athlete. It was the coach speaking to the athlete, but I've had so many, I've had most of my most important conversations with parents of athletes, you know, and because here in the United States and, and I know in, I mean, Australia has a massive sport culture, right? Um, in, 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 I would say more interesting sports than in North America, Right. Like you've got swimming and you've got um, you've got uh, what's this um, rugby, uh, you know, Aussie rules. And we don't even play and Aussie here. rules. Yep. Right. Yeah. So so but but and I'm sure it's the same. But you, you have kids that grow up and they want to be triathletes. You know, they, they want to be like uh, uh, Maka and all these guys. And, and so what happens is as a parent, you're like, well, well, where can I put my kid? You know, and so the, because you it, and then and then science comes in telling you like, oh, they're going to they got to be here by now or else forget it. They're going to have cancer mm, you know, mm, or they're mm. going to die, whatever. You know, so so in the United States, it's, it's in North America and Canada, it's too. It's, it's even crazier. Um, I like to think that in Australia, you guys are smarter than in North America. Like you get you have that this European influence. Um, and, and I think that really that really rivals what we do here. So I wrote the book. I didn't want to peg myself and say, hey, this book is for athletes because if you hand an athlete, if you hand a 14, a 14 year old, a 350 page book, they'd be like, what is this? Charles Dickens? Like, forget it. Yeah. And, and especially so, an athlete, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and because, because, but I also, but I knew this. So for me, the, the model, I want to speak to groups on this because one of the, pro, one of the things we have in, 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 especially in the United States is we have this message that, Sports has gotten crazy. We should give it back to the kids. We should do, you know, we should do like, um, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's just too professionalized. But what, ha- what, what's happened is pardon me, but it's like castrated the, the, the messages we want to come from sport. You know, when, when we talk about sports, we, you know, and we say like, what do you want your kids to get out of their sport? You, people think of like, hard work, dedication, you know, uh, perseverance. Well, the funny thing is, is that if your kid comes home from soccer and says, you know, I'm not having fun. Most people say, well, you can just quit. Don't worry about it. But we don't say mm-hmm. that. About, we don't say that about math. Right. We don't, yeah. we, we say like your kid comes home from math class says, oh, math wasn't fun today. You say like, whatever, junior, go back. You got to get your math done. But we don't, but the, yep. the, the flip side of that though, is we don't look at math class to develop hard work, dedication, perseverance, mm-hmm. right? Adversity. We don't, so to me, it's just kind of crazy. Um, and so the book is really to say like, listen, I've, I was an unlikely Olympian. You know, my parents were musicians, didn't make a lot of sense that I went on to become a sport, you know, uh, like a good athlete. Um, and so the, I, there's more kids out there who I think have a chance, but they're, they're cut loose too early. Their parents don't know coaches take them the wrong way. And I really wanted this book to empower parents, coaches, and athletes to just get it right. You know, Mm, because mm, I, mm. you know, my, my son is 12 years old, plays tier five soccer here in Canada. You know, it's just fun. It's, it's, but when there's a lesson to be taught, there's an opportunity to teach a lesson that'll last you for life. What happens, what happens a lot of times is people get real soft 
they go, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, guys. And I'm like, and I'm listen. I'm not like a total hard ass. Pardon me. Like I don't. I'm not. I don't want to come across as like I'm all this. But what I teach people is like, there's everybody needs to be the four elements. You got fire, water, earth, and air, right? And so you can't go into sport and just be air. It doesn't care if you're just air because a sport may ask you that you need to be a little fire. Well, how do you create mm, fire? Mm. But if you come into sport and you're all fire, right? You're in the penalty box all the time, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you've got to learn how to balance. And that's just one topic of a ton that's in that book. So, yeah. Uh, so I, and- I want everybody who's got a kid who's got an athlete or who's around athletes who are, who really want to, who would like to make something happen. They should have this book. It should be on the shelf. And I totally agree. Like I said, with my dance teaching background, they yeah. were, you know, from the coach side, I was like, I agree because, what, you know, the kids that do learn the resilience or learn that they, they've got to get things right or the principles that you were talking about is so right. Um, I love the way that you put it all together from, from all the different aspects. So if you know someone, if you're watching and you know a parent of a child that, that plays sport or um, – maybe a teacher that, that plays sport or a coach, a parent of, of children that are playing sport, please tag them in this post because I've started reading this book and it is fantastic. I really, really love it. Um, and I'm pretty sure Leon has popped the link in the comments, but maybe yep. he'll pop it in again so it comes up in the real-time comments. Um, but, yeah, jump on, grab a copy of the book, tag someone that you know needs to read the book or um, reach out to Jonathan. He's a cool guy. I'm a good guy. I may, yeah, you're a good guy. I may show up a little not so late. Good on the, not, not so good on the tech, but you know, you're a good guy. I may have, you know, you know what I, you know what I realized what it was, Sam? I had my screen locked, right? Because I, I read my phone in oh, bed. Okay. And so I'm like, I'm flipping it and it's telling me, flip your phone. I'm like, I'm flipping my phone. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> so, Lee, Lee, Leah's laughing. Leah's laughing at my more interesting sports than North America. P- PMSL, I get it. Um, you know, yeah. it was, <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm with you, Leah. I, yeah. I, I go both ways. I've been to Australia. I, I, I played lacrosse down there. I enjoyed, you know, but, but I'll tell you, like, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, sports teaches us a lot, right? And what's yeah, happening, agreed. what's happening here. And I don't think it's happening is they, they say it's happening around the world. Um, is that, um, you know, oh, sports is getting too professionalized and kids are dropping out. The reason why kids are dropping out is because they have cell phones in their pocket. They've got Netflix at home. They've got mm-hmm, YouTube mm-hmm. on their computers. Listen, when we were all growing up, yep. we didn't have that. We, we wanted to get the hell out of yep. the house, right? So, so yeah, we're muddying yeah. those waters, you know? So, yeah. but no, thanks guys. Totally and agree. listen, you know, re- yeah. you know um, reach out like um, Samantha, you've been on my, my podcast at the business called you.com. And, uh, and I've started to um, speak corporately now, which is kind of fun. We didn't really even touch on that, but you know, um, but uh, the high performance you.com is where that information is going to be going up. And, and the book is tied for the sports side to an athlete. It's called athlete specific.com. So if people want to reach out to me in any of those, they can. And um, yeah, this is fun and I'm happy to share. Um, I'm happy to share. And if anybody needs help, you know, kind of getting their head around, just getting this out of them, you know, just shoot me an email and I'm happy to kind of, because what I know we've talked a lot, what I do totally supports what you're learning there and what you're being taught by Sam. So, um, yeah, so happy to, it's all good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for sharing about your book, the, uh, an athlete's guide to winning in sport and life. Um, and for sharing your tips on how to get that, that book out and out of your head and onto paper. Yeah. It's like a cork <laughs> out of a wine bottle. So, yeah, no, absolutely. that's awesome. Oh, Sam. wine. Okay, wine. Time for wine. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jonathan. No worries, Sam. Cheers, guys. Ciao. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Ciao.